I would like to invite Professor G. Vishwanathappa, Principal Regional Institute of Education, Ajmer, kindly come up on the stage for the chair of the session. Our speaker for this uh, keynote uh, session is Professor M. U. Pele from Regional Institute of Maso. Sir, kindly present your talk. Colleagues, uh, Professor Chaurasia, Professor Puspanadam, Professor Paili, Professor H.P. Sharma, all other colleagues and the delegates. I am very happy to be here for chairing the session with my close friend and close associate, uh, not from uh, professional, even from the student days onwards. That is Professor M. U. Paili. Uh, so, Paili. Uh, working in the Regional Institute of Education, Mysore, as a professor of education. And uh, I was closely associated with him in Mysore, and he is uh, the major, he taken the responsibility to bring this, you know, the ICT into the practice in the institute. And, you know, the, the most of the time, ICT which predominantly they used to use as a, a tool and it was not integrated properly in the teaching learning context. And he has made the majority of the students to use in the uh, appropriately and he has developed the course materials also which is available in RIE Mysore website, particularly uh, for a teaching learning uh, context. So he has developed a number of illustrated uh, lessons by using this, you know, the technology appropriately. So that is how <coughs> he has got uh, a, a rich experience in the ICT integration and wherever he go, he used to give a, a demonstration, not to, talking theoretically about ICT, what is ICT, but, you know, he used to make how it can be used in the teaching learning context. So it is appropriately the topic is uh, given to him, that is ICT integration and uh, what are the ways uh, and what are the, you know, the fails and to the possible remedies. So because, you know, the teaching learning context, you know, because of the change of the technology, changing of this, you know, the learning context, so some, some kind of problems which we come across in the process of the integration of this the technology in the teaching learning uh, situation. So we will try to highlight what are the, you know, the way, what are the problems possible ways that we can overcome this, you know, the, the obstacles that we face in the process of the integration. Uh, so without taking much time, I welcome uh, Professor Paili to take over the session. And at the end, I think, you know, we can once again discuss. And it is a very important topic and very useful for all of us. Particularly, you know, ultimately, whatever we do, we have to improve the classroom process. So because of his rich experience, he will try to highlight the, what are these, you know, the uh, various ways that we are not able to integrate properly and how we can overcome. So, he will highlight and he will explain his talk. I over to Professor Faili. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Professor Vishwanathapa, the principal of RI Ajmer. Uh, Professor Pushmanadam, uh, my senior colleagues from RI Ajmer, the coordinator, Professor Chaurasya, and uh, all the delegates who are present here. Very good morning to all of you. And I am very happy to be here for the uh, National Conference on ICT in Education, specifically with reference to school education. And for last two days, we have been exposed to various sessions, and uh, I personally was really very, very happy the way in which uh, Professor Chaurasya has been making an attempt to make it as efficient as possible, and uh, he was able to bring in people from various places and deliberate upon a very important aspects. And it was very, very enriching. 
whether it is through video conferencing or through uh, keynote addresses here or the paper presentations. I found it is really a uh, very, very, uh, very enriching experience in terms of our uh, effort in trying to integrate information and communication technology to facilitate the teaching learning process. So congratulations to Professor Vishwanathupa and the coordinator and all the other uh, faculty members, non-teaching faculty members, non-teaching staff of RI Ajmer and all my uh, delegates having prepared well and making your attempt and deliberating upon this very important area, which is the need of the hour. And it will continue to be here and uh, technology is going to be here and it will continue to be here with us. So with this, uh, I thought uh, possibly having listened to various interactions here, uh, there were many concerns which have been expressed by the teachers, teacher educators, specifically for technology integration. And so I thought I'll just look into some of the possible ways in which we could overcome some of the difficulties that we are encountering us on today. Now, what's happening? The, we have been making tremendous progress. We know the earlier the computer used to occupy one full large room, supercomputer. Then it came down to desktop computer. It again became miniaturized into a laptop computer, palm top computer. Then it became the tablet computer, then phablet. Now we are able, able to do most of the computing using our mobile phones. And the days are now already there with wearable computing in terms of Google Watch or Google Glass or Samsung Gear, etc. So the progress is becoming very small and small. And yesterday, myself and Prashmanadam and others were talking about uh, one Indian who is in MIT, Pranav Mistri's uh, videos you must have all seen about Sixth Sense technology and wearable technology that you are able to project the screen onto any, any platform, any, any screen, any wall, any desktop where you can immediately do the computing. You can make your palm as a, your mobile phone and start dialing and speaking. He had done a wonderful demonstration. And he has been, there is a lot of progress which are happening. People are also working on foldable computer because mobile computer, the problem for us is that we don't have a large working area. So the moment we are able to fold the computer and make it, our mobile phone, if you are able to unfold it and make a larger screen, I'm sure we will be able to, we don't require a desktop or a uh, laptop anymore. So that is the progress that we have been seeing. And up to now, at least the computer is outside our body. So, but the future prediction is that, predictions are that the computer is going to get inside our body. So there are two uh, areas of developments which is happening. One is making the machine as a human being. And another thing, making human being as a machine, right? So people were talking about implanting some chip into your brain and those, those kinds of things. And with developments in nanotechnology, your computing can be converted into nanobots, which can be injected into your bloodstream, and it would do, uh, you know, hybrid thinking along with your, using your neocortex. The thought process will take place in the cloud. That is the kind of a prediction which people are making. That's one way of making a human being getting the power of the computer getting inbuilt into the human brain and to get ourselves involved in hybrid thinking and process information. Tremendous progress is happening in that area. And the other thing we know that making the computer as a human being, artificial intelligence. So we have seen about a couple of years back the IBM Watson has been able to outperform the human beings in in a quiz competition. We have seen that demonstration and it came in video. Now it is the time of Sophia, the humanoid robot. Every day if you see the news, now she wants to have a, a child. Today's news is that she wants to have a child. So we will just look into this uh, humanoid. Uh, she was having lot many interviews and all that. So basically this is for the citizens of Saudi Arabia. Sophia, the humanoid robot, and uh, developments have been happening in Hong Kong. 
and she has been given uh, the, uh, some of you must have already read it, she has been given the citizenship of Saudi Arabia. So she is a uh, robot with a human appearance. Uh, the, uh, the features are of a famous uh, actress. Uh, I don't remember her name. So it has been given in her, uh, this thing, the appearances of hers and then uh, uh, people are, every day you get the news about the uh, Sophia in the, uh, even if you search news in Google, Google you would get a number of news, item, news items pertaining to her. So maybe we could just have a, just a look at her, uh, one of the in, uh, interview which she had uh, taken with people who have assembled for a future investment initiative. So we can just have a look into this. I, I will uh, stop over here. You can always view this. Uh, uh, there are a number of videos on Sophia, Sophia here in the website. So what I'm just trying to uh, tell you or trying to understand is that the progress in technology is happening, so much of tremendous impact is happening in both the ways that making a machine as a human and making a human, uh, adding a human uh, in a computer power into a human being so the world is going to change tremendously. So how are we going to equip ourselves? Conferences like this, we are becoming aware. We are trying to understand the various perspectives and concerns which are existing today in terms of uh, changing job market, changing uh, requirements in the skills and competencies that our students need to, uh, need to have it. Now we have seen, we have been making effort through uh, NCF, National Curriculum Framework, trying to make the teaching learning process as a process of constructing knowledge, converting information into knowledge through the collaborative processes. Though we have been doing it, we have been emphasizing, what remains in the classroom is not that very promising, that very interesting, and still uh, it is mostly to do with uh, behavioristic, didactic, uh, uh, classroom transactions what is happening. Our classrooms are not so much of, you know, facilitating learning. So teachers should demonstrate their ability to form partnership. 
with the students in mastering the process of learning. This is very important. But most of the time what happens that teachers expect the students to learn but they themselves have not learned many times. Content also, they are not keeping themselves up to date with what is happening all around them. So they expect students to learn but where teachers themselves are not willing to learn. We are talking about learning to learn and lifelong learning, relearning, unlearning, so many things we have been talking about but I think somewhere uh, we are not really uh, doing that when it comes to the subjects that we have been, uh, we are supposed to be helping the children and facilitate learning process in the subject in which we are must, we have mastered. So we need to really think about this. Teachers expect students to think but they themselves have failed to do so. And when it comes to thinking and reasoning, most of the times our students are better than the teachers. It's not because the teachers are not having the intellectual abilities but they have some kind of a rigidity that I am the fountain head of all wisdom and I have this knowledge. So the, the freedom and the uh, flexibility which the children are having, many times teachers are not having it. But we need to. We need to be a better thinker. We need to be a very flexible learner. We need to be feeling comfortable learning along with our learners. So then only the classroom will get transformed into a constructivist, uh, collaborative uh, classroom. Teachers expect students to explore, but they themselves have never explored, or they are not doing it. They are not exploring it. You can see many of the teachers give some kind of an assignment and homework, meaningless. Meaningless assignments and homeworks have been given. Teachers themselves have not thought about it. And they are not worried what the students are doing, and no feedback is given, only some grades are given. Through the assignment, whether the students have been able to achieve the goal of, you know, giving that particular assignment or a project. And many times, some, uh, you know, parents do it. If children don't do the learning. Teachers expect students to collaborate, but that themselves are never collaborated. This is another issue that, you know, which is uh, making us to fail in our effort to bring in constructivism in classroom. Similarly, also technology. I am the teacher and you are the learner. This attitude will never work if you really want to bring in and convert your classroom into a constructivist learning atmosphere. Covering syllabus is a primary concern for teachers and the school and the parents. Thinking and metacognition is the student's responsibility and many times we don't reflect ourselves. We say that we need to do action research, but the simple reflections, we fail to do it. Creating the ICT infrastructure will solve all the problems. ICT integration means use of technology in transmitting information. Use of ICT is for helping students to master the content. These are some of the fallacies that we still have it. If we don't get out of it, get rid of it, possibly we are not able to, you know, integrate technology the way in which we want to to be integrated. So that the problem that we have been uh, confronting, that parents and children need higher grades, the school need best, best, better performance in terms of marks and grades, 100% result, that's what they are aiming for. And teachers are aiming for covering the syllabus. Students are aiming for camp competitive exams and end up in coaching class. They are not paying attention to your 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th standard classroom transaction, what the teacher is doing. They have a parallel system of education which is built up, which is examination oriented, competition examination oriented. And this is the situations that we are wanting to integrate technology and help out our learners. What I'm trying to say, whether the children who are writing all these competitive examinations and getting into various careers, are they successful? Possibly even if they want to, let them have that mad rush, you don't have to worry. Up to class 9, up to class 8, the children are at your, our hand, in our hand. There is nothing. They are, they are not much worried about coaching classes and things of that sort. Though some of the coaching centers even take the children from class 6, class 7, class 8 onwards. But up to class 8, we can do whatever that we want to do. We can bring in all kinds of information, all kinds of innovativeness and transform our classroom. Once we are able to give that basic foundation to our children, once we are able to develop their ability to acquire and process and think and interpret and infer uh, situations and information, once we are able to do it, I'm sure they will be able to, you know, do it more effect, effect, efficiently when they go into second, higher secondary or maybe into the college education. So let us not blame the system. The system is there. There are so many constraints are there, but then we can work wonders up to class 8. Why are we not doing that? So that is something which we need to think about it. So should the school be delivering all the content to a student might theoretically needed in their life? Can the teachers do it? Can the school do it? Even if they want to do it, 
we know that the knowledge explosion and it is not the responsibility of any teacher to transmit the entire gamut of knowledge to the children. But every teacher is responsible for developing the children's ability to acquire and process those information, ability to think and interpret and infer. That is the job of the teacher, emphasis on the process. Children will take care of their knowledge, what they want to learn and how they want to learn. They are capable of doing it, develop their competencies in the formative years. Although students' breadth of content knowledge is important, teachers and the school should not have to deliver all of it. That is the assumption. That is the assumption yesterday we have seen uh, uh, in the video conference also. So the challenges, what we are facing is that the changes which has happened from industrial society to a knowledge society, the changing world of work, the jobs have been created, new jobs have been coming and uh, people are losing their jobs. Maybe Google drive this car or maybe doctors, uh, you know, the, the computer will get the power of a doctor. Maybe another Sophia will be a doctor. There will be a Sophia doctor to uh, scan your body and give you the prescription immediately. Or nanobots will be able to cure all your diseases going inside your body and identify and correct it. So both the way, whether it is artificial intelligence or hybrid thinking, possibly, you know, many, there, is, there, are, there are likelihood that many of the jobs will be lost. So will covering the syllabus enable our learners to be prepared to face these challenges of the changing world of work? I don't know. So students should be prepared to perform at jobs that currently do not exist. So that is an emphasis. Cover your syllabus, complete your syllabus, fine. And most of the time what is happening, whatever there in the textbook of 8th standard, 80% of that, 80% of my children are able to learn by themselves. I don't have to go to the classroom and do all those blah, blah, blah. They can read and understand, they are capable. I need to realize their potential. But in the name of covering syllabus, I religiously go complete my 40 minutes. I need to teach, then only the children will be learning. This assumption of the teachers in both the teaching, uh, school education as well as teacher education, very important. Teacher education also, what do we do? We are not doing anything uh, very dynamically different, uh, drastically different in our teacher education classrooms. Teachers need to be trained in the teacher education classroom. How are you going to teach this particular subject? So this is something which we need to really ponder over. And today's learners, as we know, I think uh, this uh, concept uh, uh, kind of a thing I had developed about two years back and there is a lot many changes which had need to be integrated into it. So today's learners are exposed to various kinds of technology, various kinds of uh, tools, various uh, kinds of uh, information sources, various kinds of uh, pedagogical innovations. They are not depend upon you and me. They depend upon so many other things which are coming in. I, you, we are restricting them in our classroom, but they have access to the technology outside our classroom. So they are digitally connected. They are network learners. They are capable of multitasking. They want quick access to digitized information and it is available in their fingertip, which we have been talking earlier. All the information will be there in your fingertip, but literally we are seeing now informations are there on our fingertip. Having short attention span, and they are not what you call your maxims of teaching, simple to complex, known to unknown, or concrete to abstract. They are not. They have changed. We need to change our maxims of teaching. They are random learners. They don't sequentially access the information. And they are mobile learners. Mobile learners and ubiquitous computing. Technology is everywhere around. So you are able to do your computing wherever you are, whenever you want to do it. So the problem, however, our school continues with the transmitting prescribed content in a sequential manner. So there is a mismatch between the today's learners and what is happening in the classroom. The other day we have seen the uh, uh, professor from IIT was showing uh, two pictures to us, the classroom structure in 100 years back and the classroom structure today. Both are no difference. Both are same. Though the ubiquitous technology permits innovation, uh, schools are not innovating. Teachers are not innovating. We ourselves are not innovating consciously in our classroom. But we are innovating so much outside our classrooms, right? Some of you are doing innovation now also. Some of you are in your WhatsApp searching the message, what she or he has sent. And that person is not paying attention to me right now. So much engrossed into the mobile. Correct? She is looking at hey, what's happening around. 
she is continuing with that good so there is a world and our classrooms the children are having that access to the technology and they can do it and we are also doing it outside the classroom but not inside the classroom so what's happening there are varieties so you must have seen this maybe in the e-learning lab this is a, a concept map we had wonderful presentations on concept map by some of the paper presenters this is a concept map developed by using visual understanding environment which is licensed under creative common license cc by sa you can see under below bottom my name there and then cc by sa it's created by using an open source mind mapping tool so children are of today are exposed to these kinds of technologies these kinds of pedagogical approaches they can go and learn through mooc they can go and uh, learn through wearable technology they can go and learn through games they can go and learn you know all sorts of uh, uh, changes are there all top, all sorts of developments are happening in terms of cloud computing in terms of new generation digital learning environment we have seen uh, the other day presentation by uh, khan academy uh, where um, uh, you know the lms is getting evolved and learning analytics is getting inbuilt into it so it becomes a new generation learning uh, lms so when the big data and the learning analytics gets inbuilt into the lms the learning can be more personalized personalized learning is possible technology is helping so our children are having so many opportunities unless and until we harness this potentials of this technology and channelize their learning process in a more productive manner i am sure we will not be able to cope up with the pace in which the changes are happening so research on ict in education which i have been talking from day one there is no conclusive evidence to prove that technology has tremendously improved learning and ict is used as a tool to deliver the content and most of the researches were conducted on that and the traditional testing and then they said that you know maybe experimental group slightly better than the con uh, control group is uh, you know better than the control group experimental group maybe slightly better some studies have proven but our technology integration now it's not that what you are using a particular ppt or a particular animation or a simulation and then trying to teach the children and transmitting that content and memorizing that content or understanding that content and converting that content into a knowledge that is not enough that is not going to help them to survive in the world change the changing world and very interesting fact is that so much of learning is happening outside our classroom whether it is 600 children 800 children or a teacher trainee or a teacher educator so much of learning is happening for us outside the classroom and we need to see how technology is transforming our learning process it is already transformed what has not been transformed the teacher using technology within the classroom has not been transformed much but automatically as i was always saying that i have not or you have not attended a 10 day workshop for learning mobile phone it has become part and part of part of our life without even we consciously uh, knowing about it the same thing is happening as far as learning process also technology is getting integrated into lives of parents lives of children lives of teachers lives of adults everybody and those slow transformation is happening and the pace will automatically improve there is no doubt about it but what we can facilitate as a teacher we can harness the potential and speed up that particular process if we are also able to change our teaching learning process stop covering syllabus and make students facilitate the students to learn something so it's not the content alone what is important people have been talking about 21st century skills for so many times so many years for last 20 years we have been hearing about it but have we really made a conscious effort to bring in this a uh, development of these skills and competencies in the classroom we are still covering the syllabus giving those particular paper pencil test assessing them grading them so there has to be a conscious effort that technology should facilitate this this process of problem solving process of decision making process of critical thinking critical thinking itself is a misunderstood concept most of the times thinking critically is not thinking analytically thinking critically see basically what happens when a child encounters with problems in their day to day life they encounter with three types of problems one is those neatly numbered problems which you find in the illuminated pages of your mathematics and physics textbook 
where you can apply a particular algorithm or heuristics and reach to one solution and only one solution. So these are known as well-defined problems, where your logical thinking is enough, your analytical thinking is enough. But when it comes to problems that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, that has no one single solution and it has no particular single algorithm that you can reach to that solution. There are a number of ways of reaching to that solution and those problems are lurking in the dark corners of our own life. These are complex problems. Your analytical skills may not be sufficient. You require other skills and competencies here. Your ability to creatively look at it. Your ability to solve problems. So you require that kind of a divergent thinking ability to solve the problems that you find in day-to-day -day life situation. Your academic, so-called IQ and academic intelligence will make you get a good grade, possibly get a good job. But you may not be a successful individual, successful person in the society. You might end up hanging yourself, ending up your life, suicide. So what is called the other life skills like empathy? Managing with stress, managing with emotions, working with people, communicating with people. You know, those are things which are very, very essential for persons. Equally important. I'm not saying that academic IQ and academic intelligence is not important, but so this is the second type of problem. But critical thinking is basically to do with the third type of problem. The third type of problems are known as issues. We have a number of issues in our personal life, in our family life. We have issues in our country. There are so many issues in our country, right? Whether it is Kashmir issue or Ayodhya issue or whatever issues. We have issues dividing people into two opposing camps. So their reason and rationality will not work. It is only emotion which is going to make your decisions. So if you are able to uh, develop critical thinking ability among our children, the ability to imaginatively put yourself into the shoes of another person and think from perspectives and viewpoints of another person to genuinely understand him or her. If I am able to understand his or her perspectives, genuinely understand and uh, empathize with that particular person, I understand his perspectives and my reasoning changes, my action changes, my behavior changes. So if we are not able to think critically, we are not able to solve any of those issues. Our life becomes more complex, more complicated. And we are going to have a society where we are, we are you know, we, you just can't do anything. Intolerance. That is what people are saying, develop critical thinking. It is not analytical thinking. The ability to think from perspectives of others. See, for example, when a children, he develops into a belief that is egocentric, that I am 100% correct and you are 100% wrong. And when he gets socialized into his community, his religion, his state, we are 100% correct and you are 100% wrong. Children get indoctrinated. So it is the school which has to develop that ability of the children to think from others' perspective. So the ability to think open-mindedness, it is equivalent to critical thinking. It's nothing but open-mindedness. So those kinds of abilities, unless and until we develop among our children, I am sure they are, going, they are not going to be a successful individual and we are not going to progress and develop. So this is something which we need to really pay attention and emphasis upon. So technology is increasingly accessible to the students outside the classroom. This is a fact we need to realize. CBSC, NCRT, JNVs, don't permit mobile phones in the classroom. But outside your eight hours of classroom, children are having access to the technology. Irrespective of rural urban, the accessibilities are increasing. Digital divides are shrinking. Children are getting access to it. So we need to realize this fact that our learning is not, let us not confine that into a closed classroom. We need to create an enabling environment. The closed classroom represents a physically outdated teaching model, which does not match the interconnected virtual world we now live in. The students are interconnected outside your classroom. So let us realize that fact and break the barriers of structured classroom arrangement. Classrooms today are the least creative space one can learn and this must be remodeled in whatever possible ways within the existing constraints. So technology enabled learning environment, the school or classroom should facilitate simultaneous online and face-to-face -face learning, facilitate the use of synchronous and asynchronous modes, provide both physical and virtual space, the children should get space for individual work, pair work, small group work, two groups, dividing the class into two groups, 
for a debate, whole class work, all kinds of structural uh, variations are necessary in our classroom. Within the existing small desk and bench, if a teacher has creativity and innovation, certainly this could be brought in and done it. So what's happening, I was just trying to work out something like this. For example, grouping, we would like to have individual work, pair work, small group, two groups, all class, and also informal grouping. A lot of informal grouping gets formed outside our classroom, even within that eight hours where the children are there in the school, or teacher trainees are in the school, in the, in the colleges of teacher education. So we need to redesign our physical phase, physical furniture and infrastructure within the classroom, which will permit all kinds. Similarly, we need to create those virtual spaces, planned, consciously planned virtual space. What I'm saying, I want to have an individual work. So I would have a block, a virtual space for children to individually reflect upon. Or I would have a wiki, where children can work in a group. So I'm creating what you call the virtual space for the children. Similarly, outside your classroom, we should have facilities. We are not least bothered about what is happening outside our classrooms. So within our school compound itself, there are n number of possibilities for them to create informal learning space for group work, individual work, fire work, small group work. Create small, small structures where they will sit and do that. Make the technology through Wi-Fi or even allow them to use their own mobile devices, they will be happy to do that. Misuse of technology is the major concern for all of us, and it is a concern, it will remain, but there are ways and means by which we can actually monitor it and help them out. So creating that kind of a various types of structure immediately within the school compound wall, and also the home space. We are not having a structured way in which bringing in parents and you know facilitating the learning process. We routinely give the same old assignments, same old project. Many times parent does it. Many, uh, many times they do it. The homework, meaningless. So limitations of the traditional classroom in supporting these learning approaches is a cause for a concern. And it is becoming an increasingly, uh, it is time that we bring in changes and modify and do something, something about it which is possible within the teacher himself or herself. And the principal or the uh, administrator need to give that kind of a digital leadership. So, it's also many times we do it, integrating technology for the sake of integrating it. Using a PowerPoint or using a blog or a wiki or a, a video for the sake of using technology, that is not. We need to really think about it. We need to make the children think about it. So, for example, if I want to teach Sun and Solar System, is a class 8th or 9th uh, NCRT textbook chapter, about 15 pages. Normally, teacher takes about 8 to 9 periods or 10 periods to cover that particular unit cover the syllabus, which the students can learn in that 15 pages, whatever is written, just one hour. Enough for the students, 80% of them to read and understand. But as a teacher, I have been allotted period, I need to go and do in 40 minutes, I need to teach them, therefore I teach. I ensure that I teach all the 11 periods and cover the syllabus, which the children can learn about all those concepts which is there in the chapter, within half an hour or within one hour. What are we doing the remaining time? Why teach starts and solar system? Let the teacher ask himself or herself. If I want, is it necessary, is it my objective is to transmit that NCRT textbook of 15 page right up to the children's brain? Is that my uh, objective of teaching starts and solar system to my children? What to teach in starts and solar system? What is that particular content which I need to cover and is that only what NCRT is prescribed that this, is this the content that I have to transmit? Or I have to go beyond that? Teacher need to ask and plan it. How to teach about stars and solar systems? So, okay, I want to make the children learn about it. How do I facilitate it? So technology comes in here. So unless and until I ask the teacher, I start asking these three essential questions, I am not going to bring in any. And at the, at the same time, it's very important, I make my learner responsible. He or she should ask himself or herself, why learn stars and solar system? What should I learn? Why should I learn that? Even if I have to learn what I should learn about that. And how am I going to learn about it? These three essential questions children should ask. If they are ready and if you are making them to ask, then they have a purpose. They have a purpose in learning that. Otherwise, we are not reaching anywhere. And going further, next level, student reflection and metacognition. 
Suppose they have learned, they have set the goals, they have decided what to learn, teacher and students, they have decided how to learn, fine. After this learning happens, make the students to reflect. These three questions are enough. Why, what, how? The reason. For example, why did I learn? See, I have learned about stars and solar system. Become aware, the first column, awareness. After the class, after that particular unit, think about it. That what were my reasons of learning this? Become aware. Once you become aware, evaluate it. What my, my reason for learning this? Was it okay? Could there be some other reason for me to learn this? Ask. As a learner. Then, the next opportunity, regulate my future behavior with regard to this particular content. If I redefine my goal, I need to really regulate my future behavior. My future goal setting depends upon my reflection on the current goal, what I have achieved. So, the, naturally, it flow into the next question, the content. What did I learn? After the learning process, am I asking myself, what did I learn in sun's st stars and solar system? What are the concepts that I have learned? What are the facts that I have learned? What are the theories? What are the models? What are the skills I have developed? What are the kinds of value systems that I have developed it? Become aware of it and then evaluate. Did I understand everything? Are there any particular part of sense and solar system concepts and theories which I have not understood? So accordingly, it will regulate the third column. Automatically, it will jump into my third column that, okay, given an opportunity next time, or how do I make an another opportunity to make those things clear which are not clear to me? Or I have, this is clear, and what, what do I do? Where do I go from here? So children are taking control of their own learning. They are going to be the decision maker of what they want to learn, how they want to learn. Even another thing, how, how did I learn? How did I learn about sun and solar system? Become aware. Think about it. How did I learn? Okay, was that strategy effective? What the technology which I have used, which the website I have vis visited, the kind of interaction I had with the teachers, with my friends, was it effective? Or next time when I get, get an opportunity, how, do I, how am I going to change my process of learning? So, if we are able to make our children do this, similarly, don't only expect the students to do it. Unless and until we teachers don't do it, then we are not reaching anywhere. So, same questions are applicable to the teachers. Only the phrase changes there. Teacher reflection. Why? Reason. Why teach starts and solar system? How did I teach? Why did I teach this? Are there any other goals which I could have brought in? In the next time when I'm teaching that sun and solar system, could there be some other goals and objectives? Then my, I get transformed myself. And also in terms of the content that I have taught. Did I, this was the content that I, had, I have included. Are there anything more that I could have brought in? Are there any other skills and competencies, 21st century skills I could have emphasized? How do I bring in some of those value changes here? And how did I teach? What kind of technology I have used was it effective? If not, why do I do? How do I do? What do I do next time? So think in terms of the process. The pedagogical analysis, the technological analysis, the learner analysis, the learning styles, and creating an inclusive classroom. What are the strategy steps that I have used for making, facilitating my learning uh, to my children in the classroom? Become aware, evaluate your own processes, your own technology that you have used, and regulate it for future use. So this will certainly bring in the transformation and make you as a reflective teacher and make you your learner as an independent learner, as a self-metacognitive uh, learner, as a self-regulated learner. So, what I'm trying to tell you, the NCRT textbook, Sun and Solar System, again VUE concept map, which I was just doing yesterday. So, this is what is there in the NCRT textbook. You have Sun and Solar System, where when you're talking about celestial objects, you have galaxy, Milky Way is one. You have moon there and they are talking about surface of moon and the different shapes of moon where we are talking about the faces of moon. Then we are going into constellations, the stars, solar system, the stars, uh, uh, the star forms constellation and they are discussing about only four constellation. There are more which is not covered in the textbook. Then when you are coming to solar system, it consists of sun, comets, asteroids, meteoros and all those things. And when you're coming into planet, you have eight planets over there and the changed 
tentative emergent nature of knowledge. We said Pluto is a planet, but now we are saying, no, no, Pluto is not a planet. It is something called a dwarf planet. So tentative emergent na nature of science. Nothing is constant. It keeps changing. That is the understanding that children should develop. Then path of planet orbit, and then they are talking something about planet has got natural satellite as well as artificial satellites. And this is what is covered in 15 pages of NCRT textbook. This particular content, I don't require 10 or 12 periods. I require only half an hour for my children to read the textbook, discuss among themselves and understand. It is easy. But we are utilizing our student time in a most unproductive manner by covering, in the name of covering syllabus, I'm saying I don't have time. So this is something which needs to be thought about it. So we have a number of digital resources which we can bring in. The technology which is outside there in the classroom, children will learn. The Google Sky, beautiful. Microsoft Worldwide Telescope. There are beautiful uh, open source tools like Stellarium and Celicia, or NASA Solar System Online. You have uh, very many uh, observatories, that is mobile-based planetariums. And you have actual observatory, maybe somewhere nearby. You have planetarium somewhere nearby. If you don't want to go to that planetarium, take out your Galaxy Android phone and buy a 200 rupees worth Google Cardboard, fix it onto your phone and put it into it, you are in the world of augmented reality. You can view the entire thing. Even some of you may be having uh, uh, that software installed and you can look at it and look at various constellations right now in the daytime itself in the sky, though night is better. So children can explore and, and, and understand and they are thinking, those pages in the textbook is not what is there. Technology permits much beyond. Even if you are not doing it in the classroom, tell the children, go home, take your father's mobile phone and do this particular thing. Install it. Geo permits it. Or Airtel permits it now. By way of 4G. 5G is on the way. So why are we? What are, what are we stopping? What, what is stopping us? That is what I just wanted to think about it. So beautiful learning on... Uh, much beyond what is NCRT textbook given, much more productive manner, they can learn it. They can take a virtual trip into the space and learn about it. So space watching mobile applications, n number of it. Some are free, some are uh, uh, paid. This is not only with regards to sun and solar system, with everything you have. Augmented reality is going to be here. You can go inside your brain, inside your circulatory system, inside your heart, take a virtual trip, through an augmented reality application and go and learn about it. So there are <coughs> augmented reality applications are, you know, making visualization much more possible and understand the concept much more in a deeper manner. So we have been uh, hearing about flipped classroom. So whatever that uh, 15 pages, it's already converted into a digital lecture. It is there. Let the children go through, complete that. You don't have to teach them. 20 years you have been teaching. This year you record and make it available to the children through YouTube or whatever the means. Let them see it for half an hour, your video. They understand everything about what is there in the 12 pages or 15 pages. But make the classrooms to make it as an inclusive discussions, analysis, interpretations, so that every children find something meaningful, both the gifted as well as uh, slow learners, both the socially disadvantaged and you know all categories of children. There are, there are a number of MOOCs available, not for students. Students also can take. Students sometimes can take and they may be better learned than teacher in the days to come. Massive open, line, open online courses. There are many number of courses on astronomy which can be taken by teachers and students. Take them along there. Let them learn something more. So this is something that we need to change in the, uh, bring in the changes uh, uh, one of the applications here, you can see one of the Android applications where everything you can see it there in your mobile device itself. So developing the competency, so going beyond the textbook, when I set my goal, what should I learn in suns and solar system? As a teacher, it is not there in the textbook, but I need to bring in this. I need to discuss about text. I have time. What do I do remaining eight periods? I finished my syllabus in one period. So this time, I am going to discuss something about extraterrestrial life. What is the children encountering on a day-to-day -day life? Newspaper articles are coming about it. Developing some hobbies related to space. 
space exploration and satellites. What's the current satellites and what is happening? What is ISRO doing it? What is NASA doing about it? Recent eclipses, observatory, planetarium, careers in astronomy, link it. Morning, today I was discussing about uh, career guidance and other things. Start your career guidance right from the chapter which you are teaching. Recent space discoveries, superstitious beliefs. We have so many beliefs when it comes to suns and solar system and stars. Astrology and astrologers. Is astrology scientific? Have a debate. Discuss. Zodiac science and horoscope. Discuss about it. This is the chapter where you have to do it. Otherwise, when it will happen? Who will do it? This is not coming in every classes. As a teacher, if you don't discuss all these issues in that chapter and link it to their day-to-day -day life, that is what constructivism is talking about. Children want information so that they are able to conduct themselves more intelligently, more efficiently. So, think in that terms and also link it to the career. What is possible if you study sun and solar system? What are the world of job which is outside there for you? Astronauts, engineers, aerospace or aeronautical engineers? Aerospace, aerospace or aeronautical engineering, avionics, computer, materials, mechanical engineering, robotics, all types of engineering has got something to do with space, carriers related to space. Space scientists, astrophysicists, biologists, chemists. So what kind of a thing that they are studying? What, what, what ways in which they can help? Then we are going into technologists and technician positions related to space. Discuss about it. Discuss about the openings and the projects in NASA and ISRO. Develop that kind of inquisitiveness and curiosity right in your class 8th or class 9th or class 10th. Children get oriented, they get directions. Their level of aspirations improves. So similarly, I'm just talking about so sun and solar system, this is how it can be covered. That syllabus coverage put a full stop and how it can be done, more can be done using the current technology. I have just illustrated by showing space and solar system, which can be applicable to any chapter. You have another 20 pages in class 8, lines and angle, mathematics. The entire for 20, 20 pages or 18 pages, I have put it in one concept map here, lines and angle. Related angles can be complementary angles, which are pair of angles in which sum of measures of two angles is 90. Related angles can be supplementary angles or pair of angles in which sum of measures of two angles is 180. Related angles can be adjacent angles, which are pair of angles which have common vertex. Related angles can be adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays or linear pair. A linear pair can be a related angle which can be vertically opposite or equal or formed when two lines intersect. All those concepts have been put as a concept map here in a mathematics this way. So use, allow the children to Group them, ask them to go through the textbook, 15 pages, divide them into groups, ask them to work on a concept map. Let them, if you don't have technology, don't worry. The technology is, the basic technology is the paper and pencil and eraser. Give them five groups, five of them will do, convert that into a concept map of this. Your coverage of syllabus, they will do it more beautifully. Then, intervene. That's what Vygotsky says. Somebody has made a presentation yesterday, beautiful presentation. Vygotsky said something about chronoproximal development. There are something which the learner can learn by himself. There are something which learners cannot do at any, at any cost, even if he wants to, somebody helps him. But there is something called a chronoproximal development where a learner can learn something with the assistance of more knowledgeable others. That more knowledgeable others, it is not we teachers alone. There are more. It can be juniors, it can be classmates, it can be parents, it can be computer, it can be library. Facilitate that. Provide those scaffold to them. That is what is necessary. Initial learning, reading, understanding, let them do it themselves. After that, you intervene in terms of providing scaffolds to make them understand whatever that they have not understood. Rather than covering syllabus. Covering syllabus. You don't have to cover. Children will learn. So that is the change that we need to bring in, both in teacher education as well as in the school teaching. So applications of lines and angles, if you are able to relate it to the day-to-day -day life situation, children will learn, find more meaning also. This is totally neglected. This slide is totally neglected by the teacher. The first one covering syllabus, somehow or other, they are completed. So think in terms of that. 
or when you go into acid and base. There are about uh, eight or nine pages on acid and bases. There are about natural indicators, artificial indicators, what is, it, what is acid, what is ice, uh, acid base, what is neutralization, what is pH. All that is explained, fine. But what does it have to do with me? Then only I understand better. Neutralization reaction. Toothpaste is alkaline in order to neutralize acid in the mouth. That would otherwise damage our teeth. Acid-base chemistry is a pervasive scientific concept used across many engineering disciplines. Structural engineers use it. Design engineers, car batteries. Chemical engineers for chemical fertilizers. Food preservatives. Writing with invisible ink that the Russians had used at that particular point in time. Or cleaners, food preservatives. The body needs a neutral pH and control the amount of acids and bases through the process of involving kidney, lung, blood. I need to understand about that. That is why I want to study acid and base. So the essential question, why should I teach acid and base? And why should I learn acid and base? It is because of this. This link, if we are able to establish, that is what constructivism is talking about. Then the learning becomes more meaningful. Then there are many strong acids and bases in nature. Acid rain, aluminum hydroxide is an interesting base, which has got jellucil and other things. Another base used for cleaning uh, is sodium hydroxide, known as commonly as known as caustic soda. That's again related to acid and base. Fertilizer amazing. Lattice coagulation, buttermilk innovation. Somebody normally uh, we use uh, acetic uh, formic acid for latex, rubber lattice coagulation. Somebody tried it with, okay, I can even do rubber, natural rubber coagulation by using buttermilk. Let the children invent their own pH meter. Let them test the pH of the soil. Because farmers, most of them are farming background. I can't take the soil to the always soil testing laboratory. Baking vinegar and baking soda, I can create a beautiful soil testing uh, machine where I can test my soil whether it is acidic or basic. Without testing that, there is no point in wasting my own money on fertilizer. So if my knowledge helps me as a farmer's child in this manner, I enjoy learning it. So technology helps me in this particular process. Same thing is with the, uh, the cell biology topic, class eight, eight or nine pages or 10 pages or 15 pages. And their thing is here. Make them develop that, they will cover the syllabus, but go beyond. So in this slides, I'll make it available through uh, Chaurasya sir. I'm not going into the details of this. There are uh, the full chapter, what are the possible technologies technologies and tools which can be integrated. I worked about, about 10 slides here. You can have a look into it. And, but don't use technology for the sake of using it. If technology doesn't fit in, use your normal technology, that, it, that conventional technology and teach them. But our aim is to facilitate the learning and make prepare our learner to face this world, the, the challenges which are there in the world. So these are coming, continuing. Advanced organizer lecture, textbook, student presentation, how technology comes in. Charts, diagrams, audio recording. All the digital counterparts have been worked out. And uh, role play, videos, animation, drawing. How you're going to use the digital. All those red ones are digital. Model of cell laboratory, visual dictionary, flipped classroom, collaborative authoring, not taking, reflection, online learning, social bookmarking, web quest, field trips, Virtual field trips, interactive multimedia, infographics, all those red things are referring to technology. So there's so many tools and so many technologies can be brought into one particular chapter. Don't bring everything. You can even use just one. That's enough. But use it more in the legend manner. This is for ICT for assessment. Yesterday, Dr. Ojo was mentioning. It's also there on display. It's also shared in Creative Commons. Those who want to use it, you can do that. And yesterday people were talking about open source software. This is a, uh, a list of open source software which have been developed using a visual understanding environment, a concept mapping, mind mapping tool, mentioning almost all versatile, uh, versatile tool which can be used. And almost all these tools I have used personally. That is why I have put it here including uh, 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 Professor Chaurasia has been using very efficiently OCS this year, Often Conferencing System, uh, for including the online review and paper submission. So that is purely an open source, open source software, free software. All right, so the entire list has been mentioned here. So with this, uh, I conclude my talk here. Thank you, all of you. If there are any questions I can answer, please ensure that you ask me easy questions so that I can answer.